Hi everyone, I'm Paul Pomerlo. Thank you for joining me. This is my 2014 Victory Cross Country Tour. Today, I want to measure the tension on the final drive belt. The belt tension can be determined by measuring the amount of deflection under a given amount of force. You can find this information in your owner's manual. For my bike, it is 32 millimeters of deflection under 10 pounds of force. This is a belt tension gauge. It is calibrated for 10 pounds. It has an O-ring on it and there is a 10 pound mark and a line. We just simply put the O-ring over the line and when you put this onto your belt you push until the O-ring touches the body and that is 10 pounds. For this bike, the owner's manual says the rear wheel has to be off the ground. Now, since I'm going to have cameras and lighting under it, I'm going to jack mine up as high as my jack will go and I'm also going to be removing the right hand saddle bag. You don't have to do that, I'm just doing it for the video. Belts don't stretch evenly. Some parts of it stretch more than others. So we want to take four independent readings all around the belt. And we are going to use the tire valve on the back tire as a guide. The first one we're going to do is put the tire valve at the 12 o'clock position. For you young people who only grew up with smartphones, we're going to divide this into quarters. So the first part is going to be the valve at the very top. The second reading will be at the far right, third reading at the bottom, and the last reading will be at the far left. We want to measure at the midway point on the belt. So measure from your rear axle to your front drive sprocket and find the middle of your belt. For me, there's a bolt holding my shock absorber on and it lines up pretty well with that. Now some people who know their bikes very well can simply take their finger and push up on their belt and say, good enough. For me, I keep detailed records of my bike and I just like to know the numbers. So I'm going to use the gauge and a ruler. Now this is where people will do it differently. Some will use a measuring tape, put it on the floor behind the belt. The problem with that is that it's not perpendicular to the belt. The belt is at an angle. So we would have to move the measuring tape at an angle in order to get the proper reading. And the lower numbers on this tape are at the top. So you're going to have to subtract it from the higher number. It's not difficult, but it's just an extra step. A better option is to use a ruler. This way you can turn it the proper way so the lower number is at the bottom and the higher number is at the top. You don't have to subtract. The issue I have with this ruler is that it's not long enough from the floor to reach the belt. And the black writing on the stainless steel makes it a little difficult for me to read. So I went on my computer and made up my own ruler. I find black on white is a little easier for me to read. Plus I offset the numbers so it's easy to see from behind the belt. Then I cut it out and simply attached it to a little piece of cardboard. Then I take a longer piece of cardboard. It will rest on the floor behind the belt. Then I can take my makeshift ruler, put it behind, angle it so it's even with the belt, and move it up so the zero part of the ruler is even with the bottom of the belt. Then I simply hold them together with some clothespins. With the rear tire valve at the 12 o'clock position, I have my makeshift ruler lined up even with the belt and the zero mark on it lined up with the very bottom. I'm now going to take my belt tension gauge and I'm going to put it flat onto the belt. Don't go at an angle, keep it flat and straight with it and I'm going to lift it up until the O-ring touches the bottom and take my reading. We're at 36 millimeters. I will do the same 
for four different readings at the three, six, and nine o'clock position with the tire valve. And I'm gonna write that down. So I finished measuring the tension at the four locations. I had 36 millimeters, 35, 38, and 35 again. The tightest on my belt is 35 millimeters. The book calls for 32. So I'm three millimeters on the loose side. I can live with that. But if you decide to adjust your belt, then you're going to do it on the tightest area. In my case, that's the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock position. And remember, do it when the belt is cold. Don't do it after a long ride. Do it the next day. When the belt is hot, it's going to shrink a bit and going to get tighter. So do it the next day on a cold belt. Make sure it's dry and clean. As I say in all my videos, there's many ways of doing things. My way may seem overly complicated to others, but for me, it works well. As long as you can get the numbers, there is no wrong way of doing things. Thank you very much for watching my video today. Be safe, have fun, and we'll see you next time.